What's up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Torrance and in today's video, I am truly excited because I've never purchased anything from the brand Kaleidos. So when they announced they were gonna do a collab palette, I was sitting back wondering like, um, who could it be? Because so far I've wanted some of your items, but I'm not sure there's an influencer out there that can make me wanna get it. Baby was I wrong because soon as I seen the colors, it instantly caught my eye. But once they announced that the palette was gonna be with Angelica Nickfist, you couldn't tell me nothing. I'm like, honey, a lot of people like colors, but there are very few people I trust with color and quality. So once they slapped her name on it, I had to have it. First launch, I wasn't waiting for no restock. You couldn't tell me nothing. I wanted that palette on that launch. And when you got a palette that looked like this, honey, how can you blame me? Just this artwork alone lets me know like, okay, I'm seeing some blues. I'm seeing some color shifting. What we got going on, honey, don't disappoint me. Do not give me no over-the-top packaging and a bland, basic palette. Who basic? Not this Club Nebula palette, because baby, as you can see, we have mattes, we have metallics, we have dual chromes. I'm already excited, honey. I am telling you, this palette is beautiful. This is my very first time trying this palette out, but I can assure you before the end of the week, I will be playing with it again because it was just too many shades for me to get into all right now. So if you all would like to see swatches of this palette or know how I achieved this look, just make sure you continue to watch. But before we get into this tutorial, I would love if you hit that subscribe button. If you already have, make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my future uploads. Also, until the end of February, I do have a giveaway going on. If you would like to know the items that are in the giveaway, you can go ahead and check out this video right here. But I do have plans on adding extra items. Right now, we are at about 400 subscribers. If for any reason we hit the 500 or the 1000 mark before the giveaway is over, I'm gonna add some amazing additional items. If you would like to know what those are, just make sure you check out the description bar below or check out the comment section. But with no further ado, let's go ahead and get into this tutorial. Today, you guys, I am really excited to do this video. I don't know why they were playing with us, talking about some, oh, we just hope to do a restocking, but. Sis, y'all knew as soon as y'all dropped the info on this collab, the world was gonna go crazy over it. We all might not go crazy over Kaleidos, because I can personally admit I've never purchased nothing from the brand, but as soon as they said they was doing a collab, I was on it. And I'm telling you, I truly believe thus far, this is the hypest and biggest eyeshadow launch of the year. And it's gonna take a whole lot for a brand to come out and top this one. And if you're not sure which palette I'm talking about, we're talking about the Club Nebula palette. This palette was a collab with Kaleidos Makeup and Angelica Nickfist. I am telling you, that woman is beautiful and talented like no other. When I first got into makeup, there were very few women who were doing so much over the top, like dramatic eye looks. I always usually had to go to someone like Nikki Tutorials to get a very dramatic look. But then when I came across Angelica, I'm like, wait a minute, someone else who likes colorful makeup, someone else who doesn't have 15 million subscribers onto their channel, so when you actually leave them a comment, you can get a response back. No hate towards Nikki, because trust me, honey, I understand you doing your thing and you got way too many of us commenting, but sometimes it's nice to hit up the smaller YouTubers where you know you have a stronger interaction. And so when this palette dropped, honey, you could tell me nothing about it. First off, the color story is what got to me. I wasn't sure when this palette launched exactly what I wanted to purchase, so I just kept telling myself, all we know is we want the palette and that was all I ended up grabbing because this collection didn't come with any lip products or anything like that. I do believe it did come with a deck of cards that you could purchase, but I am someone who's always using cards, always losing them. So I'm like, do I really want to spend the money on a deck of cards that I'm probably not going to use because I'm going to want them for collector's reasons? So I decided to just skip out on those and I managed to get mine on the very first launch and just uh look at the packaging alone look how big and how sturdy this box is just this piece alone makes you want to go ahead and keep it which more than likely i'm going to do you open this box straight up and it sees here looks like that's a club right there i guess because it's called club nebula and with them having um I know when you play cards, there are four different suits and clubs is one of the different suits that you can play. So to me, that's really pretty. 
It does have a small card right here on the inside. On this card, it just shows you how you can tag the brand and things like that online if you make a post or anything. So I think I'm gonna make sure I actually use that whenever I make my what's the name, my final look. So we're gonna go ahead and skip past that. Inside there is some foam here to make sure that your palette is secure and safe, which is something I absolutely love because bubble wrap does not always get it if it's still shaking all over inside the box. And once you take that out, you see we have the box itself for the palette. So not only do we have the storage container, but the palette inside is still actually being stored, which is something I think is beautiful. So I'm going to take this out and put this down so we don't risk dropping it. All right, and I'm reading the back here. It says ultra pigmented, highly blendable, multi-chromatic, future formal shadows for freestyle elegance. Includes two multi-chromes, three sparkling dual chromes. Y'all know dual chromes is my favorite one sparkling metallic shade, and nine highly pigmented mattes. So the fact that I believe this palette has 19, no, 15 shades, if nine of them are already matte, that lets me know we are already off to a good start. Yep, and that's what I get, 15 shades here. It does come with this little plastic piece here that says Kaleidos on it, which I think is a really nice touch, but considering the fact that most people throw these away, I'm the type who either likes to go all out with this cardboard piece and want to keep it or just keep it plain and toss it out. Um, simply because there is a mirror on this palette, more than likely I'm going to keep it and just tape it there. But let's just get into this packaging first off. This is so pretty and it doesn't look like the packaging on any other makeup palette that I have out right now. So they already have one point up for originality. And not only is it decorated on the front, it's also decorated on the back. We also have a message here. It says, the Club Nebula palette is a collection of my favorite shades for my favorite people. And that's by Angelica. Down here it also says that this is Kaleido, made in collaboration with Angelica Nikvist. So I am loving the fact that you can tell this is not just something they slapped her name on and kept it going with the box. They actually have her name on the package itself. So it lets you know that this is a true collaboration and not just a money grab. So I'm already feeling this. And once we get to the inside, that is where the magic happens, sis. Like, look at these colors. If you are somebody who came looking for a neutral color story, this is not the palette for you, which is exactly why it's the palette for Angelica. She like me, she could do a neutral look, but if I have my choice, honey, it is always, always, always going to be about the colors. And just looking at this makes my brain get excited. It makes me wonder exactly what type of looks I'm going to pull off. So I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do because this is only my second time looking at this palette. But before we go any further, I want to first give you a close-up view of the palette and then also give you swatches. This is what the front of the palette looks like. Tell me they did not take their time and get the design going on here. She is beautiful. This is what the back of the palette looks like. And this here is a close up of the shades. As you can see, this is a very colorful palette. The fact that we have matte greens, blues, and purples already has me excited. Most palettes give you a monochromatic look and only give you one matte shade to pick from. I'm loving the fact that this gives me options. To help give you all the best view of the shadows, I decided to go ahead and do three separate rows of swatches since there are three rows of fives in this palette. This first row is the top row and left to right we have the first shade which is Firefly. The second shade is called Seven of Nine. The third shade is called Gravity. The fourth shade is Queen of Blades. And the fifth and last shade in this top row is called Void. I'm going to make sure I give you all a nice good view of these swatches here. And honey, let's get into this cool tone row here. You all know I really like purples, but I'm a much bigger fan of cool tones than I am of warm tones. And this to me is absolutely beautiful. And at first I thought my camera was jumping, but it appears that middle shade is actually just flickering with the light. So I think that is absolutely beautiful. Our shades left to right in the second row, starting with the first shade is You're My Only Hope. 
The second shape, I believe this is pronounced Nairu, but I'm not sure. The third shape, that one that's flickering in the middle, is called Astro. Our fourth shape is called Rock Hopper. And our fifth and final shade in the second row is called Cyclone. Now, honey, let's get into this last row. And if you can't tell, I am truly shocked and impressed by the swatches of that very last shade. Matte reds are one of the most difficult colors to produce. And just looking at that swatch, I had no intentions of using it today. But I think I'm going to have to figure out how we're going to add it into this look. But our shades left to right on this third and final row, starting with the first shade, is Celestial. That second shade is Nova. The third shade is Samus. The fourth shade is Nebula. And that fifth and final shade is Red Giant. Now that you've all seen swatches, it's time to jump ahead and get into this tutorial. Before we get started, I would like to let you know that all tools and products used in today's tutorial will be listed in the description bar below. So if you have any questions on anything I've used, go ahead and check that out. But I gotta put it out there, honey. I have no idea exactly what I want to create with this palette. I came in thinking we're gonna do a blue and green look, which is why I got my blue t-shirt on. But after swatching, these last two shades are completely jumping out at me. I had no intentions on using those, but now I don't see how I can go past it. So I'm like, okay, Torrance, how are we gonna pull this off and use as many of these colors as possible? We don't know, but we're gonna try to figure it out and we're gonna hope we don't make a big mess of things. So what I'm gonna start off with is transition shades. And I think we may be asking for trouble when we do this. But we're going to start off using two different transition shades. The first one is going to be Samus on the inner half of our eye. And the second one is going to be Seven of Nine for the outer half of the eye. All right, you guys. And before we get in there, I just got to let it be known. When I was doing my swatches, as you all saw, there was absolutely no issues with pigmentation. But these are some really powdery shadows. So I'm guessing these are going to probably be somewhere like the ABH shadows where they are powdery but they're extremely blendable and extremely pigmented. So what I wanna do is take and load my brush up and then we are gonna tap off the excess. Cause I don't wanna have a huge mess everywhere. You can always come back in and add a little more if need be, but I wanna start off right here, get this on the inner half and use this as a transition shade cause I want that red color. Okay, she blending out really easily. And I'm glad I did tap my brush off just to see what that color is gonna come through like. And I feel as if I'm comfortable with going in with a little bit more. So with this layer, we are gonna load our brush up, sis. Still wanna tap off a little bit of that excess just to help get things a little easier. But now I feel comfortable with just pressing this in place and then just buffing it up. As a transition shade, I want you to show up but it's all about making sure my crease shade gonna come through and shine. And I'm bringing this all the way down in front of the eye because more than likely, I'm gonna cut my crease that far up. We're not gonna do a look inspired by Angelica and not bring all the drama, sis. And I'm just making sure because shades like this can be very beautiful when you blend them out because once I put that crease in there, you're gonna truly see how much of that peach shade we had laid down. And I'm just trying to buff this up. I don't want it necessarily all the way to the brow, but I want that diffuse to make it look like I brought it all the way up. Bam, look at how cute she is already. Nice, soft, beautiful blend. So what I'm going to do is jump ahead and do this on the other side, and I'll be right back. Nice, soft, beautiful transition, honey. She got you thinking we're gonna be soft and natural, but honey, we're going for the drama. Now it's time to go ahead and blend out the outer half of my transition, but to make sure we don't get any of this peach color transferred over, I'm just gonna take this and swirl it on the back of my hand to help knock off as much of that color as possible. Then we're gonna go in with our blue shade. All right, now, for this shade seven to nine, this is a blue tone, so we wanna take our time and go rather slow. I'm going to try to start blending this up in the lower half of the crease and working my way up. So I'll do 
to start low, buff and blend, and you want to make sure those two colors meet, but where they actually meet, you want to be careful that you don't get a muddy color or anything. So I prefer just stepping it down until I get to that halfway point. And just buff it up and out. Remember, we want this color to be as diffused as possible. So you want to try to buff your color up as close to the brow bone as possible without actually touching it. And it's best to do this in multiple layers. Start off slow, start off soft, and just make sure your blend is right because when you go back in with your second layer, it'll be a lot easier to build up the color if you've already blended it out the first time. Trying to build up first and then blend out later, it's much more difficult because you risk having a patchy spot or one area that has way more color than another and deepening things up as you try to soften up your edges. See how we got that one color there? She's not nearly as deep as we want her, but we can always come back in and get ourselves a little bit more. I'll take this one. Once again, start off low. You see how even with that second one, by just pressing it in, the color look a little bit stronger. Then diffuse it up. This time, I'm still worried about diffusing my edges, but I'm more concerned about covering the areas that didn't quite get as much as I wanted last time. Like right here where those two colors meet. I want to diffuse this up and out past the edges because we can always clean that up with concealer and foundation. But I just want to make sure this blue it's soft and blended and gives me room to deepen things up later. And look at that, honey. All you want to do is stop, take a double take and say, okay, where is there anywhere we need a little more? And I'm going to say right here at the top of the brow. A little more color right there. And just buff that up as high as possible. Bam! Now that I'm liking what we have on this set, so far we're still looking like a bruise. Don't look like much is going on, but I promise you we're going to fix things later. Let's go ahead and add this transition on the other side, and I'll be right back. Sis, look at this, honey. I ain't going to lie to you. If I paid somebody else to do my makeup and I was sitting back looking at these colors, I'd be like, um... Where are we going with this? You're going to have to clean this up real fast. Sis. But we still got a little bit more to do. And now it's time for my favorite part. As someone who has hooded eyes, honey, I am always looking for the deepest, darkest crease shades in a palette. And this palette got a few of them. So let's go ahead and show you what we're going to put in our crease. Right now, things are a little too soft for my liking. So it's time to deepen things up in the crease. So for the inner half, we're going to start off with this shade here, Red Giant. And for the outer half, we're going to go up to the top row for this shade here, Queen of Blades. All right, you guys, no lie. When I first picked up this palette, the main reason I did not want to use this red shade is because it is the only shade that had an imprint on it. It had a nice little club on it. And I'm like, okay, Torrance, the very first time you use that shadow, it's going to mess it up. So I'm like, okay, we're going to wait. We're not going to use it at first. Soon as I had to swatch it, it was ruined. So I'm like, okay, we're going to get right into it. And just looking at this bad boy, I dipped it, but I've knocked this off several times. And you can still see from a distance how red this brush is. So we're going to go in real slow and real lightly. And we're going to start this off in the lowest part of our... Look at that. Look at how deep that color is, sis. To know that that's the color I get when I knock my brush off. Oh, my. Imagine just going in full-blown, just thinking you a dang on barbarian, sis. This is easily going to deepen up my crease, honey. I don't even think we're going to have to go in for a second layer, but you know I am just to see if she's going to build up. And we want to diffuse this up as high as possible. We want to let them know that we have color that has come through. Just look at the difference in that color. This is one small brush, one layer. And it's just bringing all the drama, honey. 
Let's hurry up and get us a second layer just to see what this pigmentation is talking about. Let's see, you're going to come through a second time. Okay, to me, I can see it building up. I can truly tell that that color has gotten deeper in person, but I don't think it's going to be deep enough for you to notice it on camera. But concerning the fact how much drama it brought on that first one, I don't even see nobody needing this second layer. So if you go in with this shade right here, Red Giant, one layer is all you're going to need to get whatever you need done. I want to make sure he come over, diffuse those edges. All right, she nice and deep enough. And you see, baby, I done brought it all the way in here because trust me, when I cut my crease and everything, we coming in far and we coming out wide, honey. So let's go ahead and do this on the other side and then I'll be right back. All right, just want to stop, take a quick look at things, make sure we good, honey. I am the type where, although I like things to be symmetrical, honey, I just need them to be sisters. They ain't got to be twins, because ain't nobody got time for all of that. It's not that serious, sis. But now that I'm satisfied with what we have so far, it's time to jump into that outer crease shade. But before we do, I want to make sure I clean off my brush so we don't transfer any of that red color over to the next shade. Sis, I am telling y'all, Every time I dip into one of these colors, I am just shocked by the level of pigmentation. I done went in and did this green one, and I'm telling you, honey, I done knocked off as much as I could. But something's telling me that the pigmentation on this is going to be fabulous. So we're going to start off outer half, right? Look at that. Yeah. Start off low in the crease and try to build that up. Look at how dark that is. Baby, to know I've dipped my brush, I've tapped it off, and I'm trying to go soft, but y'all giving me pigmentation like this, honey. It's like, are you Julius Nice? Honey, y'all are bringing me the color. I'm going to try to keep this on the outer half here because I don't want to cover up too much of my red on the inner half, but I definitely want to bring this color up as far out and as high as possible, sis. This green is deep and dark and she did not come to play. I don't even see me going in with a second dip for this one because I am afraid that this color is that dark. He's going to try to take over. Actually, let me stop playing. Let me get me a little dip right here where those colors meet. I want to make sure she nice and dark right there. I'm going to try to buff this up and out, diffuse those edges. And this is where that transition shade come through to help you. Because it lets you know how far up you can go. But as someone who usually don't listen to that type of stuff, honey, we like to just blend and buff and go as high as we possibly can. We're going to call that that, honey. Actually, let me stop playing. I just want a little bit more right here in the lower part of the crease. As someone who has hooded eyes, I'm just always making sure that the lowest part of my crease is the darkest. All right, we're going to stop playing now. We're going to call that that. We're going to do this on the other side, and then we'll be back to cut our crease. Baby. This is a big and dramatic look. I am feeling it. I am feeling it. I am feeling it. But you know we're not through yet. It's time to cut our crease, and I gotta use my favorite base for shimmer shades, the NYX Glitter Primer. I know there aren't any glitters in this actual palette here, but anytime I wanna catch every ounce of sparkle and shine in an eyeshadow, I always go for a glitter primer. I feel as if it gives me a base that doesn't move. It catches every ounce of sparkle. And if for any reason there is fallout, chances are there would've been even more with just a concealer. So let's go ahead and get things going. I have my Morphe M421 brush, and I always like to start off really low on the lid to make sure I get the base, because I always forget to cover it right there near my lashes. But we're gonna cut this really high. There's no doubt about that. And I also wanna bring this in front of the eye. I'm gonna put that right there. And then try to connect those two. And then just fill in the gaps from there. I want to make sure 
so everything is covered. I want a high, high crease. Cover up the outer V because we can always add another shade to that little later. And I want it a little further out on the outside. Just being extra with this. Now that you see what we got going on on this side, we're gonna go ahead, jump to the other side, and I'll be right back once I finish. All right, sis, all right, it is time to figure out what we are gonna do next. But before we jump into everything, I got to deepen up this crease just a little bit. So we're gonna go back into that shade Queen of Blades with our same crease brush, and we're gonna fill up our outer V. She is a dark, 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 dark. And I only want to take this to about halfway throughout our outer half. We don't want to cover up where we have that green in the crease. Baby, this is one of the main reasons why I like that glitter primer because it holds all shadows, matte, shimmers, everything. And now that we got that down, time to go ahead and get some shimmers going, sis. To cover our lids, we're gonna need some shimmer shades. So we're gonna start things off on the inner half of our lid with this shade here, Nebula. Then we're gonna cover the outer half of our lid with this shade here, Astro. All right, so far everything has been going absolutely beautiful, but you know I got to keep it honest with y'all. This shade here, Nebula, was a little difficult to pick up. And so I am hoping that she goes on the eye with no issue. And so far, yeah, but I ain't gonna lie to you. I thought she would be a little more pigmented than what she is. And I thought the shift would be a little stronger. But she is gorgeous when she actually on the eye. I am surprised I don't have to go in and actually do another layer of this because it seems like just going in and patting it on is helping fill in any other area. So that is a good thing that it is difficult to pick up the brush, but once you get it there, it seems to want to act right. But this shade just wasn't quite as easy to manipulate and get doing what I want to do like the other mattes were. So we're gonna hope that this other shimmer shade don't give us no issues. Okay, she pretty, she on there. She throwing light like she a flashlight, honey. But I ain't gonna lie, I just wish she was a little bit easier to pick up and put on. But the final product is fabulous. So I'll be right back after I do the other side. Baby, she looking real pretty. I think I might have took it a little bit far on this side, but we'll be able to clean that up later. Let's go ahead and get into this outer half. And after picking up the shade Astro, I can tell that it was not just in my head. That shade Nebula was a little difficult to pick up because even though this Astro has a blue tone to it, it came straight up on the brush. So let's go ahead and see how this go. And yeah, like look how just swiping that down, all that color we got. The nebula was a little difficult. This one here is not playing with a style. And on this side, I can just go ahead and fill things up. I'm gonna have to come back in and blend these two together. But I'm gonna wanna do the other side first because I accidentally put too much of that first shade down. So I need to see how far over I need to bring it. Oh, actually, no. I can just diffuse this now and then I can match the second shade. I just don't want a harsh line right there. I want things to blend together. And look at her, honey. 
Let's go ahead, pick up a little more product, and hit up this side. Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. I am liking her. What else do we want to do? Is that all we're going to do for now? I think this is all that I'm going to do right now. I want to go in and finish off the face. And when I come back, I'll show you exactly what I've used on the face and how we'll finish off the eyes. Baby, let me tell you. Sometimes you have to set a timer because I be forgetting. When I'm recording these videos, I be having fun. But I still have to get ready to go to work, so I need to brace and hurry up and finish things off. But I gotta let y'all know what I used off camera. Still using old favorites, even though I've been testing out foundations recently. For the face, I'm still wearing, I think, my Holy Grail foundation, the NARS Sheer Glow. Absolutely love this. Anytime I'm testing out foundations, I always go back to this one just to make sure I still like things, make sure my skin isn't gonna break out. So we have this all over. For concealer, we're using the Too Faced Born This Way in the shade Golden Beige. Have this, absolutely love it. For my foundation, I'm wearing NARS Tahoe. I believe that's Medium Dark 2 or Medium Dark 3? Medium Dark 2. Um, for, where can we go? For eyes. I'm still using my Essence Lash Princess. I've used up the green tube, been testing out this orange one and absolutely love it. Because this eye look is so dramatic, I did want to go in with lashes, but I remember I'm going to work and I can't guarantee that those lashes won't bump into my goggles. If for any reason they do, they're going to bug me, so I'll just rather skip that for today's look. And normally I would try, I've been trying my hardest to stay away from black eyeliner simply because I believe it is a very dramatic color. But it is my favorite to put on the waterline, so I had to bring it back because I've been actively avoiding it. And I'm wearing my favorite, the Perversion by Urban Decay. This is their 24-7 Glide On Eye Pencil. Truth be told, I could probably toss this miniature out, but it's so much product left on it. I'm going to go ahead and keep it, even though I already purchased a full size. But the liner on the inside of this pencil here, it started to dry out and it started to remove itself from the inside. It still hasn't actively fallen out yet, so I'm going to continue to use it. For cheeks, I wasn't really worried about any particular brand. I just knew for sure I wanted to wear a blush. And so I just pulled out an old favorite, which is the Tom Ford Cheek Color in the shade 03 Flush. I know Tom Ford products cost way too much money, honey. But at one point in time, I was just addicted to collecting makeup. And during that time frame, I managed to buy three of them. This is my absolute favorite one because it's a very loud, shocking color. But as you can see, you can get a subtle look by going in with a very soft amount. I just put on a little bit, diffused it out. I didn't want to go in and get a full color like this, but I wanted something that would remind me of the color on the inside. And I thought this one did that for me. Also on the cheeks is our highlighter. I don't recall ever actually wearing this highlighter, but a close friend of mine loves this formula so much that she bought the large, I believe it's a nine pan. Even though she only wears one color, she keeps the rest for her freelance kit. And I bought this one color simply because I like the name. This is the Give Me Glow Luminous Highlighter. I bought this in the shade Champagne and Lilies simply because champagne sounds expensive. Lilies are my favorite flower. So I wanted it for that name. But once I realized this was the color that suits my skin tone, I had to have it. When I first looked at it, all I kept saying is that looks like a big, chunky, glittery mess. And although it does have a little more kickback than what I would like, the glow on this is absolutely phenomenal, honey. It does not look glittery or chunky in the slightest on the face. But this is giving me the dewiest, wettest, glowiest look. I wanted to try to keep it subtle, but trust me, the next time I wear this, I'm going all out. But I didn't want to risk it competing with the eyes, so I am loving this. And if this is absolutely beautiful, when I put on a very strong amount, like when I'm strobing, I can guarantee you I'm going to be buying that nine pan. And the last two parts of this look is my lip combo. Lips, my favorite part of the body, honey, so I had to go in. And for my liner, I'm wearing the Straight Living Liner by The Lip Bar. I absolutely love this brown lip liner. I think the only ones that I wear probably more than this would either be Cork or Chestnut by MAC or possibly my Cola by Juvia's Place. But this definitely top five for me. And for lips, I wanted to try out a new color. I absolutely love the Juvia's Place lipstick formula, but I found most of those were a little darker than what I would want to wear for an actual nude for myself. This color here, Mademoiselle, 
New favorite lipstick from Juvia's Place, honey. The color is nice enough where I feel comfortable. And although I am wearing a liner underneath it, I wanted to make sure that ombre was a little bit stronger now because I know as time passes, that color will migrate a little bit further and make my lip line just a little less noticeable. But this Mademoiselle is exactly the color I was looking for, honey. I believe this is the lightest of their peachy nudes. Personally, I wouldn't mind them coming out with one shade a little bit lighter, but we absolutely love it. And as I said, this is my new favorite bullet lipstick from Juvia's Place. But we've been talking long enough. I'm looking back and forth trying to see what else do we need to do. Still got to finish off the eyes. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Technically, there isn't really much to do to this eye look. I just want to go ahead and finish it off and see how many more colors I can test out. So just to see what the shade looks like, I'm going to go into this shade here, Cylon, with the pencil brush and smoke that out on my lower lash line. Actually, no, ma'am. I was going to take that Cylon shade with a pencil brush and buff that out. But I decided we're going to switch that over to a push liner brush. That way I can buff it out with a second color and it'll give me the chance to test out two more mattes instead of one more for this look. So we're going to go ahead, dip this into that shade Cylon. And I'm just not noticing the first time that I saw this shade, I thought it was Cyclone. Baby. But we're going to go ahead, take this, and we want to push this as close to the lash line as possible. And ooh, she is super pigmented. She is super pigmented. Oh yeah, I think I am glad that I used this with a push liner brush because had I gone in straight with my pencil brush, she might not have buffed out as lightly as I wanted. I used this to connect to the outer edge. But I think you can see just how much darker the lower lash line on this side has gotten compared to this side. So we're gonna go ahead and do this on the other end. On the other, end, on the other eye and I'll be right back after I finish that. Now I'm going to take a pencil brush and this shade here, Rock Hopper, and I'm going to use that to diffuse my lower lash line. Ooh, baby, I am so glad I took a separate purple that's a little bit lighter. But truth be told, this is a lot more cool tone and probably giving me a much more smokier effect. So I probably could have went in with a slightly lighter shade, but we already had not. Make sure we bring this to the front half. And I'm liking how you can tell that that's a purple. Bam, loud and over the top, sis. Let's go ahead, use this, get that other side, and I'll be right back. Honey, I am telling you, I absolutely love eyeshadow. I know soft and natural looks seem to be what's popular, but anytime I look at my eyes and I see this many colors, it just gets me excited. But we're not through yet. I still want to go in and I think, what else we got to do? Highlight our brow bone and inner eye corner, so let's go ahead and get to it. For our highlights, we want to grab colors that are complementary to the shades that are already there. So for my brow bone, I'm going to grab this green shade Firefly, simply because I have blue and greens on the outer half of my crease. Then we're going to come down to this shade Celestial and we're going to use that for the inner corner because we have that matte red near the inner corner of the crease. Alrighty, first we want to take and put the most in the most. I don't know how I said that. First we're going to take most of the product and put it right here in the brow bone. I picked up a little too much so I want to do that on this side too. Make sure one side isn't too dramatic. And once we have that, then we can blend and buff things out. I want to try to keep it to the outer half and also keep most of that color near the top and take just the tiniest bit and trace the brow just simply because I'm going for a dramatic look. But I need the main focus to be right up here where our Archie is. Go and trace this at the tiniest bit just so that color hits everywhere but then diffuse the edges and make sure Highest beam is right there. Going to clean off the brush on the back of my hand just so we don't have too much green going on. And then we can go ahead and jump into this shade Celestial. Let's see what she got going on. All right, now I'm going to take a whole lot of this color Celestial. 
because I like a very bright and bold inner eye corner, honey. She ain't even come to play. That's what I am talking about, honey. I need a color that builds on top of other colors and don't give me no issues, honey. Let me get this on this side, come through. Look at that, honey. And you know what? Just because we being extra, I know I said I was running out the dough, but honey, I just want to be a little bit extra. So I'm going to grab me one more color. Just to be a little extra, there are two more shimmer shades in this palette that I have not used, but I really want to try. So I'm going to take this shade here, Nova, and put this barely over the top of this color here, probably on the lower half just to see what it looks like. And then I'm going to take this shade here, You're My Only Hope, and put this on the outer half and do the same thing. I'm not 100% sure on how this is going to turn out. So we're going to grab Nova just because she is the lighter of the two. And I just have just a little bit on one side of a silicone applicator. And we're going to bring this down here and we're going to put this only on the lower half. Oh yeah. That way the color on the top still shows through and we can see exactly what's going on. But can you see how it gave us a little more shift going on on the lower half of this side here? I'm not sure if it's showing up, but I want to see if I can get it for you. This is what this side looks like without that extra. And this is what this side does. I want to see if I can add a little bit more to help increase that shift. I'm hoping you can catch that on camera. I think it is coming up. All right, let's do that on the other half. Grab a little bit more Nova. Put it near the lower half. And then I'm just gonna flip my brush over and do the same thing with that You're My Only Hope. All right, we have it on the other side with You're My Only Hope. And now we wanna do this near the bottom. We want to make sure we don't cover everything. And with You're My Only Hope, the shift isn't coming through quite as strong as that first one. I think in person, I can see it a lot better than you can see it on camera. I want to wait and see. But you can tell I put something else there. It's just not really catching the light the way that front half is. But we just wanted to see what it looked like. So we'll do this on the other side and I'll be right back. Alrighty, honey, I am happy with what we have so far. Personally wish that that topper shade could have came off a little bit stronger on camera, but I am satisfied with what we have going on in person. So now it is time to set things. So get your sprays ready because you know I'm about to grab mine. I know you guys are ready. Fix Plus to give us a glowy do. All nighter so things last all day. Cheap fan, expensive breeze, good times. Gonna give this a few more seconds to try and I'll be back to give you all my final thoughts. And this is the final look. Wanna go ahead, give you all a full face view of things before I give you all my final thoughts. And I'm telling you, honey, just looking at this bad boy, how can you not like it? It's dramatic, it's pigmented, it's blendable, it's beautiful. I have never, ever tried anything from Kaleidos. I can admit I am a completionist, I am a collector. So every time the brand launched something, I would sit back and think, okay, well, if they have this one highlighter, let's see which other ones they have. And every time I wanted to pick them all up, there was always at least one sold out. And I'm like, yeah, honey, I'm not about to pay for shipping and wait all this time and I can't have the whole collection. I'm spoiled, give me everything or give me nothing. And so I was completely content with never trying Kaleidos, even though I always wanted to. I believe they have either these small five or seven pan palettes and I really wanted those. But once they discontinued one of the green ones, I'm like, nope, I'm good. Nope, I, I just never try them. 
Then they dropped this little gem here and all I kept saying is Torrance, you're gonna have to put your feelings aside because if for any reason you skip every palette they've released, you will be okay besides this one here. Angelica is someone who just loves colorful makeup, so do I. And when I saw this palette, honey, I had to have it. There is no way you're going to tell me I can get my favorite color, which is greens. I can get my favorite accent color, which is purples. But then I can also get colors that are hard to find, like reds, plus colors that make me feel like I can step out of my comfort zone and still do something interesting like blues. I had to have it. The palette is beautiful. The packaging is beautiful. The person they collab with is beautiful. And now it got me sit back wondering, Torrance, do you need to get other things from Kaleidos? Because if this is the type of formula they bring you and the quality they bring you for something that's limited edition like a collab, imagine what the quality is like for a full-time item. So for me, I say, yes, grab this palette. I believe, I no, I know for sure I grabbed this one on the first launch. Before I could get a chance to record this video and post it, they've already done a second launch that is sold out. So if for any reason you want this palette, I truly recommend you sign up for that emailing list for that third launch and grab it because there is no telling if they're gonna do another one after that third one. But this is nothing but a great palette. I absolutely recommend this palette. And now I'm just sitting back looking at it like, um, Taurus, I think I may have to put this up because my friend wasn't able to get it. And once she found out I got it, she may be asking to brawl it. And I'm going to be looking at her like, um, yes, it's, I don't know. I love you and I trust you, but I might have to go ahead and help you get your own because I still have not done a full, just all green eye look. And I think that's what I'm going to do next time is a green and purple because those are my colors. But she's beautiful and now I have to find somewhere on one of my shelves to put her because this doesn't just go over into the cabinet with all the other palettes. This is the only palette I have by the brand. It's also a collab. Wait, I just thought about it. I have a shelf full of collab palettes that I just thought about. We're going to have to find somewhere over there to put it in. And just looking at the shelf right now, I don't see exactly where she's going to go. But I think I might be moving some things around. So check in with me in a week. If for any reason you all would like to see a video based on just the eyeshadow palettes I bought simply because they were collabs, make sure you leave me a comment down below because I can make that happen for you. I love collecting eyeshadow palettes, but anytime you attach an influencer's name to it, I'm that sucker who believes I got the bag because I want to support my favorite artists. And a lot of times just watching their videos is enough. Knowing that I support you socially is enough to get other people to notice your channel and things like that. But there's nothing like realizing they've put their heart, their energy, and their love into a product. And it gives me a chance to step inside the head of another artist. Anytime you give someone, let's say, 100 eyeshadows and you say, pick 10, create a palette, there's a pretty good chance that if you ask 10 different people, they'll come up with 10 different color stories, even if they all love that brand or they all love the same thing. And it just feels nice to finally have something that Angelica has collabed on because I've watched her channel for years. I am telling you for years. And I just really would like to say one, congratulations, Angelica. The palette is beautiful. I would also like to say Kaleidos, look out for me because honey, I ain't never placed an order with y'all before this one. But trust me, I will be coming back because they have, I think, two other palettes. Instead of trying to get a full set or a full bundle, I'm just going to go in and get the items I like and not worry about things that are in stock any longer because I see that I have been missing out on a fabulous brand. So all I can tell you all is sign up for the email, grab it if you don't have it. But if for any reason you can't get this particular palette, I still believe that Kaleidos makes an amazing formula. So go ahead and make sure you all show them some love. But I really need to be heading out the door. So I hope you all truly did enjoy this look. If you did, give this video a thumbs up. Also, make sure you check out Angelica's channel. I'll make sure that I leave her channel link right here above because she does amazing tutorials and you do not want to miss out on content like that. Make sure you all are subscribed to the channel. If you already are, I would like to say thank you. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my future uploads. Do not forget that I have a giveaway going on. 
All you have to do is be subscribed to the channel and leave a comment on my very first video. This giveaway is open till February 28th, so make sure you all enter that. And if for any reason we hit either the 500 or the 1000 tier on my subscriber, I'm gonna make sure I add some additional goodies in that. If you would like to know what those are, just make sure you check out the description bar below or my comment section. But with nothing else, I hope you all remember to practice, continue to stay blessed, and until next time, goodbye YouTube.